Today we finish off our terrain board with some final touches including some nice rusty old bridges. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. When last we left off, we had our terrain board at this stage here. Our lava has been made, our cliffs have been uh, stylized, so now it's time to move on to the next steps. And what are those next steps? Well, first thing we're gonna do is do some bridges. Now, um, I'm gonna make these out of some uh, chain links that I found at Michael's, and as you can see, uh, some of these are going to go under a cliff face, and once those are done, we're going to build a set of stairs. Also using the chain, I found these to be really, really useful for this application and this project. Um, this is what the chain links are. I found them at Michael's in the uh, kids' craft section. Uh, it was five bucks, 400 pieces. You can get a ton of projects made with these. Now these are super convenient, they just kind of snap and clip together. Uh, I'm going to do two lengths of chain here. The small one is going to be 13 links long and the big one is going to be 15 links long. Putting the chains on a simple jig made with toothpicks and some spare foam, I did a double coating of Mars Black. This is going to give a nice shadow foundation for all of the dark crevices and kind of cover up the neon colors that the chain comes in. Uh, and then we're going to follow it up with a quick dry brush of bronze. Um, this is mostly to go on the surface level and give a nice shine. Then we're going to do a very light coating of silver. Um, you can also stipple this on for a more refined and localized effect. Then we're going to use a little bit of red oxide to add some rust coloration. So now for the rungs and steps and all that, we're going to use a popsicle stick and cut them into a two inch section. And these little divots here that I've marked out are a quarter inch. Uh, this is going to allow them to slide in between the links of the chain and just kind of become a uh, stable walking platform. So now we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Mars Black and Silver to give a nice dark gray metallic coloration to all the sides of the bridge pieces. Now I'm doing this because I want the bridge to look kind of like a Bronze Age metallic metal bridge that would have been suspended over lava because I feel like that would fit better than a wooden bridge which you could argue would catch on fire. So once that's done, we're going to do a dry brush of bronze. Uh, this is going to be very light, I just want it to be a hint of bronze, not full color. Then we're going to do a edge highlight dry brush with silver to kind of give it a worn look like it's been scuffed. The next step is assembly. So. As I'm putting this together, I made a decision on which side was going to be face up and which side was going to be face down, and I only wanted to put glue on the face down sections, that way it wouldn't be overly visible. Now as for how I'm putting these together, it's as simple as uh, wedging the popsicle sticks into the vertical oriented sections of the chain link. Uh, this way, the chain will still sit flat and flush to the ground when everything is put into position. Now, I am putting this together one side and then attaching the other uh, because it makes it a little bit easier to do this. Unless you're building it in position, then I would highly recommend uh, building it one rung at a time. Now, this isn't hyper crucial, but it does help to disguise the connection point on the end of the chains by uh, putting them in facing towards the uh, wooden sections of the bridge. Alright, so once that's dry, uh, we're going to take some of these uh, smaller wooden pieces made out of coffee stick. I painted them up the same way and these are just going to fill in the gaps in between all of the larger pieces. And These are cut at one and a half inches which are just the right size to fit in between all of the rungs. Uh, you may have to 
uh, press things together just a little bit, but they help to fill out the bridge and since they're painted in the same way, they really kind of help fit everything together. Uh, and it's not super noticeable that they're a slightly different size. So once that's done, I set them aside to dry uh, and took about 20 minutes and then they were ready to fit in place. So the next step here is to take a uh, sharp tool. You can use a toothpick or a drill bit. I'm using this little uh, poking tool that I found. Uh, just kind of putting a couple of holes and then I took this cut chain link that I had made as an extra and I'm going to put a couple of dabs of glue on the top of the holes so that when I fit this link in, it pushes the glue down and helps bond everything together. Alright, so I'm going to do the same on the other side here, and once this dries, those links will be solid in position and the bridge won't go anywhere. So once it's all fitted in place on one side of the uh, lava flow. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. Um, the nice thing about this is the bridge is shiftable and movable, so it makes it a real easy thing to fit it into place, make sure that you're getting all of the positions correct. Alright, and since the bridge is still a little flexible, you can kind of bend it into shape and mold it to exactly how you want it. And it is solid and stable enough for minis to be placed on and walk across. So now we need to make a stairway up to the next level. So I'm taking this link of chain. Uh, this is about nine rungs long. And same method, we're just poking a couple of holes and I'm going to secure this one chain in place and this one we're going to build everything in position on the table. So once this one is secured down on the bottom here we can start fitting our uh, stair steps, ladder rungs, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, since I designed this to be stairs I'm going to call them stair steps. Uh, we can start fitting those into place to make the stairs up to the summoning circle. Alright, once the stair step here is in place, we can use that as a essentially measuring tool to make sure that the next section of chain attaches in the right uh, distance away. And in case I didn't say it previously, uh, the glue that I'm using here to attach the chains down is uh, just some regular old tacky glue. So this second length of chain is not quite long enough to make it down to the uh, cliff that it's aiming towards, so we're going to end up adding an extra link to this just to give it a little bit more reach and then we will end up um, attaching that link like it's just kind of hovering off to the side. Alternatively you could just leave it as a broken wobbly bridge that your players would have to make a check to uh, climb up successfully and safely. So now that the new link is added, we're going to secure it down the same way as all the other bridges. And there's a little bit of a hole here at the bottom, so we're going to add a bottom step to it. Now this won't slide in from the outside, it's not quite small enough for that. Um, so we're going to put it on the inside. And in order to avoid just having it sitting on top of the ground, we're going to take a pair of cutters and just kind of clip it off so that it's a little bit shorter. 
uh, and then do a little bit of trimming to the end to make it a little bit easier to slide into the chain link. And this won't really be noticeable as the cut end. Um, it'll all get disguised by the chain. So then using my poking tool, I'm creating a little bit of a hole on the uh, cliff face, and that's just going to slide in and fit together. Now, I didn't quite like how low it was. I wanted a little bit higher, so while everything was still drying, I was able to pull it out and then shift it to be a little bit further up, and that fit a lot more nicely. And then to finish things off with the stairs, a little bit of super glue to hold everything in place and make sure it doesn't move. Now the amount of space in between all of these steps is more than enough to take a model and be able to stand them on each of the rungs. Alright, so here we are so far with the project. You could absolutely leave it as this and be done, but I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of open spaces on the flat areas, so I think it still needs a little something. So I took a bag of decorative uh, filler rocks. Uh, these are white kind of sparkly rocks, and I decided to paint them all up with a layer of Artist Loft Gray, uh, just to kind of give them a more natural rocky color. Uh, these are going to just be a little bit of extra filler for the terrain. Alright, so once those were dry, I took a little bit of tack putty and a cork and decided which side was going to be sitting flat on the ground. And then the other sides of the rock, I did a light dry brushing of neutral gray just to give them a uh, weathered, worn, rocky appearance. This will also help to remind me which side I had already decided was going to be sitting flush. So now I'm using them to just kind of place around the board on some of the more flat areas just to kind of help break things up and give it a less flat uniform appearance. And there's no real rhyme or reason to placing these. I'm just kind of putting a few here or there. Uh, a couple of them get stuck next to each other. A few of them are on their own. The idea was just to create a little bit of extra terrain. Now for this section here, I wanted a kind of like stair step or platform that would imply that this is where you want to step up and go up to the circle. So taking a few of the flatter stones that I had, I created a little ledge, perch, platform, whatever you want to call it in this spot right here, just to kind of create a stair step. And here we are with the finished board. I put a few models on here just to give it a uh, implied battle scene. I am loving how this came out. And I kind of want to do more stuff like this in the future. Uh, let me know in the comments what kind of terrain board I should set up next. Uh, and I absolutely cannot wait to surprise my D&D players with this board in our next session. For any of my players watching, please reference this code at the beginning of our next session to claim a special prize for watching. Alright everyone, so that's going to be it for today, and that's it for this terrain. Please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comments section, and we will see everyone next episode.